Hello, Awakened Beauties. Finally, it's here, the truth, to empower women to true inner beauty through healthy biology. And now, here is your hostess, Cassandra Keel, your organic beauty and CBD mentor, helping you stay sane, get sleep, and bring your sexy back. Sponsored by EvokeBeauty.com. Welcome to the Awaken Beauty Podcast. I am Cassandra, your organic beauty and endocannabinoid mentor. And today we're talking coconut oil. Despite what you've read about coconut, it may not be as good for your skin as you thought. First off, our skin needs moisture. It needs moisture to help prevent water loss. This is especially important for dry skin, dermatitis, aging, and many other skin conditions. I know it seems unavoidable since coconut oil is one of many natural oils that is often used as a moisturizer, and it's also seen as a miracle for absolutely everything. Just ask Google. But the truth is, when applied to your skin, coconut oil can make your skin even worse and even more dry. So don't get me wrong, I certainly use coconut oil in a myriad of ways. And so before we go any further, let me assure you, this episode is not to knock coconut oil. It's not meant to diminish its attributes or any of its goodness that it brings internally and externally when used in the right way. So as a skincare creator, I absolutely understand the attraction to DIY products and things that just basically make it simple. So stay with me and I'll give you the top four reasons why I don't recommend that you put coconut oil on your skin and some great options for what you could use in place of coconut oil. For you, listeners of Awaken Beauty Podcast, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. Simply go to www.audibletrial.com slash Awaken Beauty Podcast. That's www.audibletrial.com Awaken Beauty Podcast. So let's start. Coconut oil is too alkaline for the skin. You see, your skin has a natural pH level of around five. Therefore, it is not wise to repeatedly disrupt it, not even with a natural product like coconut oil. The same is true with our guts. Alkaline water destroys the acidity needed to fully digest foods So let's quickly review pH so we can fully understand this concept. pH is a measure of acid-base strength on a scale from 0 to 14. While the numbers 1 to 14 seem small, each unit of pH is 10 times stronger than the one next to it. So what does this mean? It means that your skin with a pH of 5 is actually at least 100 times more acidic than what it is rated at to be a neutral. So I think we've all heard someone react to some kind of detergent or laundry soap. Well, let's connect the dots. So if washing with soap and detergents can worsen sensitive skin because of their pH values, and in fact, using soap and detergents is one of the most common reasons I see dermatitis. Studies show that washing with soap increases the skin's pH by up to three pH units. So remember, what does this mean? It means it's up to 1,000 times stronger alkaline, and the effects of the skin can actually last as long as 90 minutes after using a substance. So again, Increased pH irritates the skin by thinning its protective layer. That layer, which is called the stratum corneum, plays a critical role in creating a state 
of what we call leaky skin, which ultimately perpetrates an imbalance in your skin's microbiome. So unfortunately, the very thing that we turn to in coconut oil deters the skin's healing. So to make this clear, coconut oil has a pH of 7 to 8. And if the healthy skin natural pH is around 5, it means that the coconut oil is 100 to 1,000 times more alkaline than your skin's natural pH. So bringing it all together, what we learned is that the pH of 7 from coconut oil actually instigates a state of dysbiosis in your skin's microbiome, which then leads to leaky skin. All right, number two, coconut's molecular weight is highly, highly saturated, making it very heavy. First, we want to separate saturated fats from food's nutritional value from applying it to a topical skin application. Coconut oil is 90% saturated fat. So this usually is worse for sensitive skin types like dermatitis. And you may ask why? Well, coconut oil, since it's large molecules, just hover over the skin and they are absorbed very, very slowly. While it smells and feels so good, the right analogy is that you're actually putting plastic bags on the skin, not allowing the skin to breathe. So when emollient ingredients, whether it's carrier oil, natural butters, waxes, or even petrochemicals, sits on the surface of the skin without being absorbed, it actually forms what's known as an occlusive barrier, which keeps your skin from breathing, and it may hinder other important skin functions. So this often is what leads to breakouts for many women. So not only does coconut oil allow the skin skin not to breathe, but then it also inhibits detoxification. Another barrier issue can lead to your body's temperature regulation. So not being able to release heat, release toxins can only further exasperate the situation further. All right, number three, coconut oil disrupts the skin's microbiome. We really are just starting to wake up to the power of the microbiome. We don't run our microbiome. We're actually finding that our microbiome needs us and controls us. So it's a good reason to ditch the sanitizers because really we're creating our we're creating more of a risk to desensitization on the skin which brings down our immunity, advances aging and further skin issues. So what does the microbiome do? Our skin's microbiome helps your skin stay healthy and also maintain the barrier from the outside world. Coconut oil has saponin qualities. And I remember using soap nuts and for my laundry way back in the day. And much like soap nuts, coconut oil is actually can be fractionated into saponins, which kill microbes, including bacteria, viruses, and fungus. So really, even natural antimicrobials disrupt the balance of the skin's microbiome, which can affect your immune system, your barrier function, and in which increases inflammation and further dysbiosis, going back to what we referenced as leaky skin syndrome. So the bottom line, because Coconut is a very strong antimicrobial and antimicrobial properties. It doesn't mean we should always apply it to the skin for those qualities. Number four, what are the best alternative oils for your skin? All right, so let's skip to the conversation to a positive with positive carrier oils that will nourish your skin's needs. There are many, many beautiful oils that provide our skin to rejuvenate the consistent cellular turnover and also bring a strong barrier repair. So I'm going to list the following oils and help you turn, uh, tap into what I have at 20 years of experience of working intimately with the skin. And so let's just go ahead and deep dive into what these oils and how their different components in each of them help your skin in different ways. So the first one is 
jojoba oil. So jojoba is excellent for skin and mainly because of how it's similar to our actual human skin sebum. These attributes actually similar to the sebum help remove excess sebum and also have a influx of anti-inflammatory effects associated with the jojoba oil. This in turn can help with acne and many other types of dermatitis. The next one is avocado. Avocado oil is another healthy oil to try. It contains many, many vitamins, minerals, and skin-supporting oils like linoleic acid. It's excellent for dry, damaged, and severely chapped skin. And I've had a number of clients over the years have different sensitivities to carrier oils. And this oil has actually been uh, really great for nearly everyone. So it's very, very, very rich in antioxidants and great for soothing inflammation. It also has high sterilin content in which are compounds known as anti-inflammatory, making the avocado helpful in healing from sun damage, age spots, as well as inflammatory skin conditions like blemishes and eczema. Next is sesame oil. Sesame oil is a great anti-inflammatory oil that promotes healthy skin barrier function. And because it has significant antioxidant activity, sesame oil has been used to relieve pain and inflammation in our joints and by just simply massaging it into the skin around the areas of pain. And it also is used in traditional Ayurvedic medicine. The next is going to be sunflower oil, which has been studied for dermatitis because of its moisturizing effect. This is interesting because studies find that 20 Two actually, two percent of two percent solution of the sunflower oil improves skin conditions similar to using a steroid cream. So, number five are the GLAs, and I really love GLAs because these are really, really incredible nourishing oils. And as we age, we actually lose our ability to produce this fatty acid production. So, one of them is evening primrose oil, and the other is rosehip oil. So they're both wonderful oils suitable for several skin conditions. It contains a high concentration of fatty acids called GLA, gamma linoleic acid. Linoleic acid is shown to reduce clogged pores by dissolving sebum and other impurities in the pores. This makes it an excellent choice for oily, aging, and acne-prone skin. Because the fatty acids in the Evening Primrose Oil also contain anti-inflammatory properties, which also reduce redness and irritation. These oils are great for dry aging skin as well because they help the cell structure improve and the elasticity of the skin increase. It is extremely moisturizing, reduces wrinkles and dryness, and encourages regeneration in the skin cells, which I've already noted, helping the skin safe, be supple and soft. It's also great for conditions like eczema, psoriasis, and rosacea. So the last but not least, we're going to talk about hemp seed oil. With all the craze and rage on CBD, it can be a bit confusing on what companies are actually putting CBD or hemp in the product. So first off, hemp seed. Hemp seed does not suffocate your skin. It's filled with vitamins, minerals, and healthy fats such as magnesium, potassium, vitamin B1, vitamin B2, omega-3, 6 and 9 fatty acids, and a plethora of vitamin E. So then what does CBD oil do? Well, CBD oil won't get you high first off because it doesn't have any mind-altering properties of marijuana's THC contact. So they're very much two different parts of the marijuana plant. And it is also really, really important to know that CBD oil is not the same as hemp oil. The two are often marketed interchangeably, but CBD oil is richly concentrated with cannabidiol, 
which is the hemp oils, it only is contained in hemp oil with trace amounts of cannabidiol. So to be certain that you're buying an actual CBD oil, look for cannabidiol or cannab- cannabis sativa seed oil on the ingredient list. And I'll give you more options to lo- below to look for. So the biggest issue is that hemp seed oil and CBD are very two different compounds that come from the same parts of the hemp plant, but they have very different makeups and very different benefits. So marketing them as the same thing just isn't accurate, drives me nuts, and does a disservice to consumers who are expecting certain benefits from the product they are buying, but they won't get it from hemp seed oil and who are often paying more of what they're thinking when they're buying a CBD oil. It's simply unjust. And I'm hoping that the market will clean up sooner than later. All right, ladies, if you're looking for natural organic solution-based beauty and superior CBD, go to evokebeauty.com. That's E-V-O-Q beauty.com and receive 25% off your very first order with the code AWAKEN. Again, that's E-V-O-Q beauty.com. Type in the code AWAKEN for 25% off your first order. So then how does CBD optimize healthy aging and skin health? I love this subject. So there's an imperative crosstalk between CBD and your skin. Here's a cool fact. CBD oil regulates over 1,000 gene expressions in your biology. And this this is such great news because the impact of positively creating a healthier short and long-term epigenetic interaction brings potential for both aging and ailments. And in fact, a recent study completed by a clinical research company called Gene markers showed CBD oil when in the right formula has the potential to reach over 165 of your skin's genes expressed through the CB2 receptors. So here's what to look for on a label, whether you're wanting cold pressed hemp seed oil or if you're wanting CBD oil, or in fact, you may want both. Now, keep in mind, we're waiting for research to catch up. So hemp seed oil, you can known as industrial hemp oil, hemp seed oil, cannabis seed oil, cannabis sativa seed oil, whereas CBD oil will be known as cannabidiol, hemp oil, hemp extract, hemp extract oil, full spectrum hemp, and phytocannabinoids. So do you need to entirely stop using coconut oil altogether on your skin. And as you can see, for some reasons shared above, there's great alternatives to coconut oil. And I too was quite surprised by the information when I initially heard it. And after I tested a little bit, I can guarantee that it is to be true. My skin got drier and my hair got drier by just putting on coconut oil by itself. So I encourage you to try different combinations of oils. You can add coconut oil to the other oils that I had recommended. But the key is to keep the skin's microbiome and the outer layer fully saturated without an an occlusive layer of fats that do not allow your skin to breathe and have a healthy cellular turnover and replenish itself on its own. Remember, we don't want to force the skin. We want to help the skin do what it does best. And we always want to get that microbial and microbiome back into balance. So do you have to cut out oil completely from your skincare routine? You know, maybe not, but like I said, you may want to minimize your skin's coconut oil exposure. So to do this, just stop using straight coconut oil on your skin. And like I said, blend it into other oils at a small, small percentage. So 
That's what I have to share with you today. Please leave a comment below. I'd love to hear your own experience using coconut oil on your skin. And any of your thoughts would definitely, you know, be added to this great conversation. I know it's pretty much controversial, but after my own experimentation, doing a lot of research with your research studies, I think there's a plethora of other really beautiful, healthy oils that we can choose from. So I hope that you found this episode informative. Make sure that you like and review the Awaken Beauty podcast wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. And uh, don't just leave a review or a five star. Make sure you give it a five with your absolute brilliant aha or popcorn that you had from today's episode so that other women can capture exactly what you captured. So until next time, this is Cassandra, your organic beauty and endocannabinoid mentor. Hello, Awaken Beauties. Thank you for joining Cassandra today. Were you inspired to bring your sexy back? Please like and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. Interested in high quality natural products for your hair, skin, and wellness? Please visit evokebeauty.com. Again, that's evokebeauty.com. E V O Q beauty.com. Until next time, stay sane, get sleep, and bring your sexy back.